If you're a beginner and you want to improve your portfolio with some magnets media style edits, then this is a video for you. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do a quick magnets media edit that I would want to have in my portfolio as a beginner. So let's jump right into it. Okay. We are in DaVinci and this is the clip that we're going to be remaking. It's just a simple three second clip, but that's why you should have it in your portfolio as a beginner video editor. So let's see it. Yeah, it had captured nearly 50% of the entire video call market. Okay, so that's all there is to it. It's just a simple three second video and we are going to recreate it in Fusion now. So. Don't be scared, it's gonna be easy and I'm gonna walk you through it. So we are gonna go to our effects tab, get our fusion composition in, make it the same length as the video. Okay, now we go in our fusion clip, click on the fusion composition and just go to fusion. Okay, now that we are in fusion, we can add our background and we can leave it at black for now. It doesn't really matter, so yeah. Let's go to our media pool, get our clip in, and put in the first viewer. If you don't have two viewers like I do, just click this button here. As you can see, just one, and this is the split screen viewer, so just click this. Okay, now let's add our assets in. Let's add our clock, or let's rename it. Clock. Now let's add our hands. Press F2 to rename things if you don't know. So, hands and our video call icon. So, video icon. Now that we have our assets in, let's just bring this down a bit and just merge the clock over. As you can see, now we need to resize it. So, what do we add? We add the transform node. So, click on the clock, press shift and space, and just type in transform. And now we have a transform node. Let's bring it down a bit. So, let's size it down to somewhere around here. Let's change our pivot because it, it is a bit to the right and we want it to be centered with this. So pivot goes to here and up it to the center of everything. So, okay, let's get it here and just a little bit down to somewhere around here. Let's center it. Okay. Now when we adjust our size, it will do it from the pivot and not from the center of the photo like it was. Okay, maybe we can just center a little bit to the side so it looks more centered like this. And as you can see, let's close this media pool. And as you can see uh, in this view, as we play it, it just zooms out in the background. So that's exactly what we are gonna do. So go to frame one and then just keyframe it here. And here the size should be quite large. So something around here. And then go to frame one, 108 and keyframe it again. And let's get it down to something like this. Yeah, it should be enough. Okay, the next thing we can do, as you can see in his video, the clock is bluish color so that's exactly what we are gonna do click on the clock node and then shift and space and just type in color corrector color corrector okay let's add it in so let's get our hue somewhat close to his something like this looks okay oh let's get our gain just a little bit up and our lift just a little bit up okay that looks nice so as you can see for now we have something like this we're just zooming out okay so we are gonna add a text node go to here and add a text node in and connect it over like this and type in the same words that you see there and for the font we can do something like Dora I think that it looks. Let's 
Let's see which one. Well, this resembles it closely, so we'll choose that one. Go to the shading and then shadow, enable it. We can make it kind of red. Not that much. Let's get it down. Somewhere around here. And let's change the position. It should be something like this and get that capacity right down because as we can see there is like a red shadow in his videos so let's try to make it a bit better like with this but soft the sound the somewhere around here and let's just get the opacity down and get the x offset just a bit lower back and the y offset should be like this yep there's that okay we just have to make it bigger so we can go to the merge and just adjust the size a little bit to something like this okay so now we need a transform node because it starts moving up and then disappears somewhere around frame 15 so there we can keyframe our center go to the beginning and keyframe our center again and just move it up about to here maybe a little bit less somewhere around here let's see yep and then we can go to the blend and uh, to the merge and keyframe our blend so here we keyframe it and go to frame seven and keyframe it again and just go back to the last keyframe and get our blend down so now it should look something like this yep that's about that okay next thing we can get is these hands so they just spawn in really small and get bigger and bigger so let's merge our, our hands over okay so let's get our size down somewhere like this and then just somewhere at frame 35 they get really big so somewhere around here should be enough okay let's see now yep we can go down to our spline click on the size select all and just press s to smooth it out a bit and then just adjust our bottom spline to somewhere around here let's see how it looks now it should be a bit let's adjust this one too so yeah that looks nice it looks about right so that's all we can just maybe get this one a little bit down so it moves a bit quicker yep that's about it okay next we need our video icon so let's connect that over we can actually add a color corrector node to this tool so just make it bright blue and increase the saturation a bit we can also add a soft glow to this 
soft blue. Got dark ink. Rub it down. And get dark green. Rub it down more. Increase our glow size. And that looks about right. So we'll leave it at that. Then we can add a transform node to it. Transform. We can get the size a little bit down so it fits a closer to his. Let's get it down just a tad bit more. I think that this looks okay. On this frame, we will keyframe the center and angle. For our rotation on frame 50, we can keyframe the center again and our angle too. So just go to the first frame. We'll get our angle something to 180. And then get our Y value down below. So let's see how does it look. Okay, our angle should be negative 180. Get that to minus 180. And now it spins the exact same way. Okay, now go to our spline. Zoom all to fit. And then just select all. Press S. Press T. And then just, just start easing. Somewhere around 80, I would say. Let's see how does it look. Yep, that is about it. So we'll leave that there. Next thing we need is this 50% coming behind. So we'll need an another text node. Let's add that. So go 50% just like this. And we'll have to adjust our size. I think we can choose something like monster out here, something like black. Okay, and then adjust our directing a bit. We can actually just adjust our size a little bit. Okay, so this is where it should be. We will put it behind everything. So let's just move our clock here and just select the last two nodes. Hold shift and just move them here. So now they are behind everything as you can see. Okay, what else do we need? We actually need a rectangle mask so it doesn't show when we animate it. Because right now, I just get transforming. If I were to animate it from down below, it would actually be visible. Okay, let's get our rectangle mask and just connect it to our merge. Let's click a rectangle and just then go like this and click invert. So now when we animate it, it's just going to disappear like this. And it looks amazing. This is where it starts animating on frame 38. So let's keyframe it there and it's fully up. On the frame 60 so on the frame 60 it should be somewhere around here and on the first keyframe that we set we have to move it a bit down and then just go to spline zoom all to fit select all and just press s to smooth it out a bit so it looks something like this see now let's see them side by side okay so now all that we have left to do is just make this as you can see it gets closer and just spins a bit and then fades out so we can do that with a simple Transform, so add a transform. After everything, then 
we'll keyframe our size and angle and go somewhere around here and just increase our size first let's keyframe our size and angle again just increase our size to something like this and then get our angle to be something like this so as you can see it just starts spinning out we'll go to our spline and then zoom all to fit select all and press s press the R keyboard and just adjust our easing and ease out a bit so looks closer to his let's get this down like this so somewhere around 40 nice and ease out should be somewhere around 80. let's get this one too like the one above and that should be about it now we can actually on our transform go to settings and turn on motion blur and just pump up the quality a little bit and shutter angle a little bit so now as it moves it's gonna have that motion blur maybe get our shutter angle down and motion blur down by one or we can actually leave it at two Okay, that's nice. And then we can just animate, connect one background again over it and go to blend, go to the last frame, keyframe it like this, go around frame 108, keyframe it again and bring the blend down to something like this. And then we can just ease it. And when we play it, it looks exactly like one in the videos. So that was a quick and easy tutorial on how to edit like magnets media. I hope you guys liked it. And if you want to see something more advanced in 3D workspace from magnets media, then this video here is for you.